The Dakar Rally is the longest and most prestigious rally raid event in the world. It was first held in 1979 and had the goal to organize a race from the French capital of Paris all the way to the city of Dakar, which is Senegal's capital. To reach the destination, the 170 teams engaged in the first edition would have to cross the Sahara Desert and complete 16 days of driving. Since then, the race has changed itineraries quite a bit. From 2009 to 2019, the race was even held in South America. And nowadays, the rally is actually held in Saudi Arabia. The spirit of the race has stayed all the same though, so today we're going to try and reach the end of a 339 km stage mixing sand, rocks and dirt mountains. My name is Carl and this is What Does It Take to Win the Dakar Rally? Here we are then at the start of the stage for today's great race. Dakar is traditionally held in January and that makes it the first major motorsport event of the year. We are in Dakar 2018, which is as far as I know, the only rally raid game that is out there. So it's pretty cool that we actually have the uh, possibility to use this game for this little experience and to try and see what it is like to be racing in the Dakar. Now this being the 2018 game brings a couple of caveats with it. Uh, of course we are in South America instead of uh, Saudi Arabia. Oh. Yep, yeah, a lot of ventilation there. <laughs> we need to watch out for the road while I'm talking. But the uh, geography, it, it should be quite similar because this stage has actually 100 kilometers of dunes, which is quite a lot, even uh, for a, uh, a country like Saudi Arabia, that would be a very, very big uh, sandy stage. But normally uh, this should give us a, a good representation of what the car is nowadays, even if this is the 2018 rendition of the game. Now, this is... This being the only Dakar game uh, also means that the studio took a very big risk in, uh, in making this. And, uh, and I think that's, that's pretty amazing that they decided to bring in this series to a game. Uh, very big risk and uh, I think that's, that's pretty amazing that uh, they did that. But I must say uh, the game is definitely not perfect. Oh god damn it, we're stuck in the mud. <laughs> The game is far from being perfect, unfortunately, and uh, physics-wise, there are a lot of flaws. But it does look very, very pretty, that's one thing for sure. I need to keep my cap here, but uh, because of those uh, physics problems, I've actually decided to take a controller. And this uh, makes it actually even more difficult in a way. <laughs> look at those oh, crests here. Very difficult to, uh, to take those without creating any damage, but we're keeping our cap 294. And yeah, with a controller it's actually pretty difficult to keep your, your heading uh, in the same direction all the time. So it actually introduces another difficulty for me. And I can tell you guys this race is not going to be an easy one. But what is this heading or cap that I keep mentioning? Well, the Dakar is a great orientational race. The navigational aspect of the race plays a big part in determining the winner. In every stage, you need to reach a certain number of checkpoints that are called waypoints. And every vehicle is actually fitted with a tracker that picks up the signal from these different points. All the teams are given the same instructions to how to reach these different waypoints and they have the same route. The goal is to pick up all the waypoints before you reach the finish line. So while you're driving, you're actually constantly checking a couple of things. The first one is your cap or your heading, which is uh, at the top there, the degrees you see on the top right. Now uh, we're following 181. You're also constantly checking how many kilometers you've done on the left there to then know when the next note is due. And that's at 252 for this particular example. So there we're going to hit the note and we're going to go to 100. But two, 100 98 sorry so that's the other thing that you want to constantly check but it's kind of difficult when you have to commentate at the same time 
This may look easy enough when you think about the great distance between all of the nodes, but when you're in a desert with little to no reference points, and you need to be constantly multitasking between looking at your cap, looking at the next note, and looking at the road where there's potentially a race ending rock ahead, it quickly becomes very, very difficult. This is basically the competitive aspect of the Dakar. Who can complete all the waypoints the quickest without breaking the car? So now we are actually leading this rally, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Carlos Sainz is gonna come back at us pretty soon. We need to avoid making these mistakes. Car is still fine though, so let's keep going. You have to be so vigilant on these terrains to keep your cap, but at the same time to avoid any big rocks that might be hidden behind those crests. Because that, that could be a race ending. Reliability is a big part of the race. You want to go fast, yes, but you also want to finish it in one piece. The jumps are big and rocks can potentially end your race. You want to avoid repairs at all costs, as they can take a lot of time, it can be very tedious. It will tire you out to repair the car all the time, and in a 15 days race, you really want to spare as much energy as you can. Restraint is definitely a great asset in the Dakar. We're actually side by side with Carlos Sainz here. Oh, I don't know if it's chosen the best the best road here but as you can see even in such a wide terrain and with so many, so much so such big distances between every uh, waypoint and everything you can still have very close racing behind between the competitors we're gonna be looking to beat Carlos Sainz today El Matador Cannot do anything against us today. Okay. What is it? 354. Damn it. Let's maybe follow the Spaniard along, but avoid making the same mistakes as him. Oh, what a jump! Holy shit! He's still in the race though. This event is absolutely amazing. One of the reasons why this event is so legendary is that it's actually open to pretty much everyone. A lot of amateurs actually join in on the fun and uh, some years there's up to 700 people taking the start at the Dakar. There are five different categories in this. We've chosen uh, a car because, uh, well, obvious reasons. I just love cars. And uh, these, these cars look pretty beasty and probably cost a lot of money. But you can actually join in with a bike, a quad, a buggy, or even a truck if you, uh, if you want to do that. And I think that's one of the, the reasons why this, this event is so legendary. Oh, beautiful, beautiful downhill here. Look at that road. It's absolutely amazing. The places that the car brings you through, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Holy shit, look at those rocks, guys. The terrain is absolutely fantastic in this. We're just in a, a big valley here, following a, a road in the middle of nowhere, with giant rocks either way of the car now. What would you want more to uh, satiate your thirst for adventure? This is what makes the Dakar so special. It's the vast stretches of land almost devoted of any civilization. It's 
the feeling that you're alone with your ride fighting the elements. But it's also about the great camaraderie between competitors. In fact, you will often see people help each other out, even if it costs them time to the overall victory. The Dakar is one of those races that is almost, if not more, about the adventure as it is about the end result. It's gonna look like uh, it's looking like it's gonna be a, a close battle between us and Carlos Sainz for now. I really don't want to lose him at all. And if we can just follow him along, we could actually end up in front of him at the end of this, because he started ahead of us. This is going very, very fast. Or was it 45? Ooh, what a jump there. And we're on the track. For a couple of kilometers, that's pretty good. We're still right behind signs, and I'm really looking forward to a, a battle for the, the lead here. Hopefully we can keep that up for the whole race. El Matador is, of course, one of the great legends of the sport, but we are on board with Sebastian Loeb, which is one of my... Uh, Favorite rally drivers of all time, trying to give him a win today. He has won uh, several stages in Dakar, but never won the overall event. So it would be interesting oh, to see what kind of uh, performance we can get today. Carlos Sainz lost it again. Straight ahead. Easy enough. And we've just inherited the lead, guys. That's very good. Quite happy with that. We've already done 76 waypoints and this has been a very big adventure. I hope I, uh, I painted a good picture of how difficult this challenge really is. I've had to concentrate a lot through it. And, uh, and while I tried to entertain you guys at some points, I also did a lot of just si in, sitting in silence and, and trying to, uh, to gain a bit of an advantage. Oh! No, 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 no! Oh, did we just end our race? I think we didn't. We're still good, we're still good. Ah, That's the problem with this break on the... Uh, wait, did I just do this right? Go around, yeah, right? Till 321, okay. <laughs> I almost ended this whole race. So we need to keep focused and we need to keep going to the finish line. Otherwise me, we might give Carlos signs the win here. I actually couldn't, can't even imagine how they do it in real life. These guys doing that 15 days in a row. They are absolutely beast of, uh, of drivers. Where do I need to go? 49, 32, oh yeah, still a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> Another very big challenge. I feel like sometimes I, I recognize the uh, 143. I still need to stay. Ah, am I losing this because of my stupidity? Maybe. Coming at the end of the stage, so I'm, I'm getting a, a bit of fatigue going on here. This is the big... 
Oh, this is the orientation part of it. Sometimes the uh, the notes are not really all that descriptive and you kind of question yourself seeing how you should uh, approach a certain challenge. It looks like we did it. For well, now, com coming towards the end of this challenge and I can really feel how this whole orientation thing is really difficult. Sometimes you really don't know where you're supposed to go. You need to know... Oh, that's the finish actually! They, they only get the notes at the very start of the day, so... Yeah, they don't have much time to prepare at all and they just like kind of get these notes at the last moment. But there we go guys, we won this challenge, the first, first challenge of the year. We actually managed to do a 42 minutes and 16 seconds and Carlos Sainz is right behind us after a 300 kilometer run here today. Absolutely crazy stuff. If you're still watching this video at this point in time, make sure to comment barrel in the comment section below so I know you're one of the real guys and make sure to subscribe because you probably really enjoyed this video if you're still here. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any point in time. Another video I would suggest is to go check out the Beam NG video we made where we just went flat out over dunes to see how much damage we could make if we really didn't care. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you Space Races next time. Goodbye.